If you thought cheating was just for players, think again. Here are five ways that games break the rules just to make you feel better. I don't know how to break it to you nicely, but games lie to you. It's all to make you feel more like a god than just someone sitting with a mouse and keyboard, but they're lies nonetheless. Just really, really fun ones. It turns out that cheating definitely isn't just reserved for players. Game developers have been doing it for years, all just to give you the feeling that you're in complete control of those glorious Hollywood cliffhanger moments. To quote Jurassic Park's Ellie Sattler, though, you never had control. That's the illusion. So, from a xenomorph with literal eyes in the back of its head in alien isolation, to the sanity meter in amnesia not actually meaning anything. Here are five ways that games cheat to make you feel better. So, first of all, you'd think that we kind of rely on AI not cheating. Whether they're enemies or friends, NPCs should always behave exactly as we'd expect. Enemies should want to murder us, and friendly NPCs should be on our side and not reveal our hiding places. Simple. Or so you'd think. It turns out that while you'd assume that making bad guys bad and good guys good would be enough, that's not the best way to make us better players or feel positively about a game. Dr. Tommy Thompson, writer and producer of YouTube channel AI and Games and Gamma Sutra author, routinely dives into the decisions behind AI design to discover the psychological effects on the player. In a closer look at Ubisoft's Ghost Recon Wildlands, Dr. Thompson explains that in order to make you feel like you're the centre of the universe, your small team of NPCs must do three specific things. Not hog the limelight and stay in a supporting role, react to surroundings and be helpful when needed, and most importantly, follow the player's orders. While none of that can exactly be constituted as cheating, in practice it means that your AI teammates will call out things that they probably can't see with their pixelated eyes, but that the game's system as a whole knows is better for you to have the heads up on. Dr. Thompson also explains that when you tell your fellow ghosts to shoot enemies in sync, the rules will always be bent as far as possible to make those guns work in magical ways. Ready to engage. Engaging Tangos. Target is down. For example, if an enemy NPC is buried in a bunker and totally impossible to shoot, your AI squad mate might say that they can't take the shot, but the rest of the time you'll probably find that the enemy AI will drop dead as they should. And that's not because a pixelated bullet brought them down. Instead, the game uses what the Wildlands AI team call Magic Shot, which shows a squad member pretending to shoot an enemy and that enemy just keeling over. There's no such thing as missing here because no one is actually taking a shot. Dreams shattered. We've all had that moment in a survival horror game, realising that you're down to your last bullets as a staggering member of the undead approaches. Two left. Miss! Ah! Last one. Headshot. Will it stay down? You aren't hanging around long enough to find out. But what will you do with no more ammo? Oh, what do we have here around the corner? Could it be a box of bullets? What a relief! What a coup! What would you have done otherwise? How lucky. Except it's not lucky, is it Resident Evil 2? It's Dynamic Difficulty Adjustment, DDA for short, and you've implemented it so well that we genuinely feel like we're part of a sweeping narrative where scarcity keeps your heart pounding but somehow never leaves you stuck in a situation you can't shoot your way out of. We see you. DDA, when done well, should be absolutely invisible. It's the ultimate dev cheat tool, the one that controls how we feel about a game regardless of our capabilities. Perhaps you'll never need those extra health packs or more weaponry, but the fact that a game can recognise when you're having a tough time and react accordingly without you noticing is an incredible achievement. Chances are, if you've played Left 4 Dead 2, you've already felt the true wrath of DDA and you definitely won't have noticed amidst the spitters, the boomers and, of course, the clowns. An AI that Valve calls the Director 2.0, a sequel to the DDA of the original game, is there to specifically control the hordes of creatures, but also weapon locations and health packs. If you've ever stumbled across some much-needed medication just when you needed it the most, that's absolutely no accident. Left 4 Dead 2's director even has control of walls, music, pacing, and can send you a different way through the level in response to your style of play. If this is cheating, it's cheating on a spectacular scale. While some games will be helpful dependent on your style of play, others are quick to use it against you. Thanks, Hideo Kojima. 
In Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain, icons on your map will let you know that the game is switcherooing itself to deal with your playstyle. If you're shooting too many enemies in the head, more foes with helmets will start appearing. And if you're doing all your stealth by the cover of darkness, you can expect a lot more night vision goggles to be staring in your general direction. Wonderful. So, while some games are clear about adapting to your playstyle with DDA, others are a little sneakier about the idea of luck in the first place. You think you know the odds of something happening in games because all you've got to compare it to is real life, but chances are you really, really don't. Are you ready to feel like less of a master? Let's start with something simple, like Peggle. No, nothing is sacred. In his article, How Designers Engineer Luck into Video Games on Nautilus, Simon Parkin discovers that many of our unicorn-related victories aren't quite as one million to one as we might think. In Peggle, the seemingly random bouncing of the balls off of pegs is sometimes manipulated to give the player better results, explains Peggle developer Jason Pakalka in the article. The lucky bounce that ensures that a ball hits a target peg instead of plunking into the dead ball zone is used sparingly, but we do apply a lot of extra luck to players in their first half dozen levels or so to keep them from getting frustrated while learning the ropes. most important in all of this is that we don't feel like we're being cheated. No one wants to see a line of rubber banding cars all ready for you to overtake in the last lap of a race, and we secretly appreciate the deadly bonuses of the grenades flying from Borderlands slot machines. Sometimes bad things just happen. This balance of luck, though, is on an absolute knife edge. Go too far, though, and it's completely ruined by what games call pity timers, the increased odds of a drop of a precious item once you've had a long period of not getting anything good. Parkin discusses this with Paul Sotosanti, a Riot Games designer. Sotosanti says that fatigue can set in where a player is just waiting for the pity timer to kick in. The primary emotion they feel upon finally finding a legendary is often not joy, but relief, perhaps tinged with sadness. Oh. Huh? Oh. It's a feeling that we all know well, and it's a perfect example of a game trying to make you feel better, but completely failing at the same time. Please be aware, not being aware costs lives. So, this definitely comes under AI cheating to heighten your experience, but I've given it its own entry because it's far too much fun to have as an aside. If you've played Alien Isolation, you know the feeling of acute terror finely crafted by Creative Assembly. In fact, hold it. Ah, that's better. Here we are, aboard the Sevastopol as Amanda Ripley, daughter of Ellen. And of course, we don't want to take a single step in any direction because we know what lurks here. We know what's stalking us in the shadows, and it's terrifying. But it's important to note that we aren't just afraid because of what the Alien movies have taught us. We're afraid because of what the studio has built, an atmospheric hide-and-seek experience that gives us the genuine thrills of a Hollywood monster movie. Unfortunately for us, though, in order to get that means a little bit of cheating on a part of the development team. Our friend from the start of the video, Dr. Thompson, has done a deep dive into what he calls the perfect organism in alien isolation. Check out the link in the description below for the complete feature, but Thompson explains that in order to create those cinematic experiences and feel like you've truly survived an encounter with the alien, there needs to be a constant sense of unpredictability and the right balance between downright scares and nail-biting tension. What the developers called psychopathic serendipity was achieved by forcing the monster to always be messing with your plans in an unscripted way. To make this happen, not one but two AI systems were brought into play, a director AI and an alien AI. The director, just like Left 4 Dead, always knows your location, but the alien AI is driven by behaviours to hunt you down. And helpfully, every so often, the director points the alien in your general direction. It doesn't cheat and say exactly where you are, but it gives it a general enough idea so that you're always feeling just stressed enough, but know you can escape. Incredibly, once you've been suitably menaced, the alien will back off again. So, 
If the alien having the upper hand wasn't enough, it turns out that it's even more sensitive to your movements than you might think. And that's thanks to some imaginative biology. Creative Assembly didn't add sensors to the xenomorph's tail, but it has short-range ray tracers or eyes in the back of its head to make sure that you can't avoid detection by walking slowly and quietly behind it. It will find you. Game over, man. Now, to finish, it's time to break your heart with a collection of even more lies. But hey, at least they're good ones. Let's take a look at this article on how Amnesia the Dark Descent's horror relied on a bit of cheating. By a bit, it turns out that the sanity meter that you obsess over as you attempt to keep your own brain intact doesn't actually mean terribly much. It originally worked as a standard hit point counter, but the dev team realised they wanted all players to see how scary the game could be, regardless of how they performed. What this means is that while you have a sanity meter on screen, you actually have no control over when it drops. It acts like something that you've got power over, but regardless of where you go and whatever you do, you'll always experience the madness when it plummets. The game actually lies in some of its opening text as it tells you to beware the consequences of a full sanity meter drop. Let's all celebrate being afraid of things we have absolutely no control over. Yay. And don't worry, frictional games aren't the only culprits. Health bars are never accurate, as you've probably realised during swimming levels in your favourite action games as you somehow survive endlessly in the red, and as admitted by Dev Tim Spencer, even time has an extra bonus second in games like Sonic Racing Transformed to make you feel better about close finishes. Is everything a lie? Maybe GLaDOS was right after all. Hopefully you aren't feeling too crestfallen by the five ways that games cheat and lie to make you feel better. Let us know if you know any more tricks in the comments below, drop us a like if you enjoyed having the magic, well, ruined, and don't forget to subscribe to Logitech G for more videos just like this one. If you do already subscribe, which we really, really appreciate, hit that notification bell so that you know exactly when our next pack of non-lies lands.